This is Business Class on Your Money. Hi, I'm James Wilkinson and welcome to Business Class. Today's show is coming to you from Santa Barbara in California. Before we check into one of America's most legendary hotels, here's this week's travel news. As Sydney mops up from some of the worst thunderstorms in 20 years, Virgin Australia is encouraging travellers to prepare for what's expected to be a busy storm season this summer. With one of the busiest holiday periods of the year fast approaching, the airline says it's preparing for the storm season to ensure that all guests arrive at their destination safely and in a timely manner. Virgin Australia's General Manager of Network Operations, Andrew Lilliman, said it was important the travelling public knew the impact that thunderstorms can have on the airline's flying schedules. As such, Virgin Australia has released a video explaining how storms can affect flying operations. Let's check it out. Hi, my name's Andy. I'm one of the pilots here at Virgin Australia. Today we're going to be talking about storms and the effect on the aircraft operation. My name is Manfred Gracious. I've been a meteorologist at Virgin Australia for about 10 years. There are two main ways thunderstorms will affect uh, airline operations. Firstly, of course, if it's in an airport, it will have major impacts on uh, takeoff and landings. Also, if there's a lot of storms en route, the aircraft may have to divert around those storms to avoid the major impacts of lightning strike and significant turbulence. Thunderstorms are a very significant issue for airlines and are very dangerous weather events potentially. When thunderstorms are producing lightning within uh, five miles or eight kilometres of an airport, we generally have to shut down operations on the ramp. Sometimes you will encounter delays at a port where there's no storms present. That occurs when there's storms either at destination or sometimes en route. For Virgin, when we have a delayed flight, the ripple effect can be significant. So if we take out a Melbourne flight, for example, it may not necessarily be going back to Melbourne. It may go Melbourne to Coolangatta, then on to Sydney, and then on to Townsville. So that will obviously have an impact down line. During a storm event, aircraft will deviate from their normal tracks, and this has an effect on us, where we can only accept so many aircraft to arrive and depart, and it's better to keep aircraft on the ground. It's a lot safer for the aircraft and for the passengers. When there is a storm event, we work with the airlines to discuss options, and what we have is a ground delay program, where we can recalculate time of departures to facilitate better departure rates and arrival rates to try to minimise delays, and this is done via our National Coordination Centre in Canberra, and via all the major city airports. We've got a number of processes to keep people notified about changes to their journey. If there are any planned or foreseeable delays to your flight, we'll communicate those to you via text or email. It's really important to us to be able to get in touch with you as quickly as possible. What helps us do that is having your most up-to-date contact information. We've got that sole focus of trying to get your journey back on track. After hearing from our experts about what goes on behind the scenes, we hope that you have a better understanding about why your journey may be impacted. We understand delays can be frustrating, but we're doing everything we can behind the scenes to get you on your way safely. We'll be back with more business class on Your Money. And be sure to check out yourmoney.com.au. LVMH has signed an agreement to acquire boutique hotel chain Belmond for 4.5 billion Australian dollars. The acquisition from the company that owns brands such as Louis Vuitton, Moet Hennessy, Christian Dior and Rimawa is expected to close in the first half of 2019 and it includes a collection of 46 luxury hotels, restaurants, trains and river cruises spanning 24 countries across the world. LVMH said the acquisition was part of the company's plans to expand its reach in the luxury hotel market. Sony's got some great cameras that we film this very TV show on that are ideal for your next trip. Here's a few of our recommendations. Sony's latest range of mirrorless cameras are making filming and taking photos easier than ever before, while also providing some of the highest resolution video ever seen. We film all of the interviews and some of the vision for this very show every week on one of Sony's most popular ever releases, the Alpha 7 Mark III which offers excellent high-resolution still and 4K video footage. The high-resolution 4K movie shooting available on the Alpha 7 Mark III means you can capture footage that's good enough to be broadcast in high-resolution in a cinema. Moreover, the combination of full-frame format plus HDR gamma achieves a wide dynamic range. 
According to Sony, full-frame movies recording using this HDR profile will appear true to life, with no block shadows or blown highlights when being played back on an HDR compatible TV without the need for color grading. On the photo front, the Alpha 7 Mark III has a wide ISO range and a dynamic range at low sensitivities. The camera offers continuous shooting at up to 10 frames per second with either mechanical shutter or silent shooting on full autofocus tracking. The Alpha 7 Mark III is lightweight and is loaded up with so many automated technologies that even the most novice photographer would be able to produce poster-perfect images and high-definition YouTube-worthy videos. During 2018, Sony also released another exciting model in the popular CyberShot RX100 series of compact cameras, the RX100 Mark VI. The RX100 Mark VI camera is the first of all the RX100 models to include high magnification zoom through an impressive Zeiss 24-200mm lens, which is remarkable given this is a pocket-sized camera. Its extensive zoom, high-res image quality and versatility for both still images and video make it one of the best pocket cameras ever released. Most impressively, the RX100 Mark VI has high-speed continuous shooting at up to 24 frames per second with full autofocus tracking and then on the video front it films in full high resolution 4K with full pixel readout and no pixel binning plus 4K HDR for instant HDR workflow. Whether you want the full camera experience or something to throw in your pocket, Sony absolutely impresses with these two models. The Alpha 7 Mark III starts at $3,099 Australian dollars and the RX100 Mark VI is priced from $1699. Coming up after the break, we check into one of America's most legendary hotels, Four Seasons The Biltmore in Santa Barbara. We'll be back with more business class on Your Money and be sure to check out yourmoney.com.au. And now, more business class on Your Money. Four Seasons The Biltmore in Santa Barbara is known as one of California's most legendary hotels. Let's check in now. Karen, thanks so much for your time today. It's almost Christmas. We're here in beautiful Santa Barbara, one of the most exciting parts of California, isn't it? Oh, I just love it. I came here 13 years ago, not intending to spend all that time, but once you've been here, they call it the American Riviera, and you can understand why. It's just stunning. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to visit and also to live. And you've got one of the most beautiful hotels in California that not a lot of people know of around the world unless you're an Angelino, really. It's a beautiful, beautiful property. We have a lot of repeat visitation, so when a guest comes here for the first time, they fall in love, and sometimes they buy homes here because it's such a gorgeous um, location. Surrounded by the mountains, you've got the Pacific Ocean, and the climate is fantastic. So all year round, it's a very beautiful climate, and it's just a stunning place to live. And a great part of the world for Christmas as well. It's a fun part of the world. Absolutely. I mean, we're really, we're fully booked for Christmas. Uh, we have a lot of extended families and we make it fun. So we have a lot of really great festive programming and yeah. it's just a lot of fun. And you obviously you've got wine country so close by, but it's one of the many things you can do around Santa Barbara. Oh yes, we actually have more wineries than Napa, and a lot of people are surprised by that, but it is such a gorgeous drive out. You can take a helicopter, you can take a private car, with a coastal concierge, and it is, and the wines are really, really good. Uh, but there is so much to do, from horseback riding, anything on the ocean, uh, whale watching, we have the channel islands just there and they have amazing caves and we have a big art scene you know we have a lot of theaters we have 13 theaters we have a lot of um, museums we have a photography school we have the Academy of the West everything that is here is done really really well and if you look, you're only an hour and a half from Los Angeles, which Correct. is pretty yeah. amazing. Yeah, and it's a beautiful drive up. So a lot of our guests fly into uh, LA and they 
rent a car and then come up PCH. Or we have a little a beauty little airport here in Santa Barbara and it's about 20 minutes away from the hotel. I saw that yeah, United flying into yes. Santa Barbara, which makes it very easy. Yeah, we have 10 direct flights in there and it's so, it's a gorgeous airport. It's very quick and efficient and a lot of our guests fly in there. And, and your hotel is really the heart and soul of Santa Barbara. It's been around for over 90 years. Yes. I think, I, you know, the local community is so supportive um, and, you know, I like to give, you know, we like to give back to the community. It's very collaborative and everyone helps one another. Um, but the locals are wonderful, great patrons, Pearl Casino Beach and Cabana Club, we have a lot of members there. Um, and then our owner is just about to open Montecito Club, which is going to be a gorgeous golf course, Jack Nicklaus signature course, it'll be lovely. So it's quite a great escape from uh, really in Southern oh, yeah. California, isn't yes. it? Yes, yeah. that's a good word actually, great escape. People come up, um, up from LA, it's too hot up there, they come up the coast. Uh, we're very fortunate, we, we're, you know, we get a lot of visitors and we just love it. And tell us about the hotel, it's uh, a beautiful hotel, quite iconic in this part of the world. Absolutely, um, I think our owner has invested so much but really kept true to the Spanish colonial style and so from the tiles, the Spanish tiles in the lobby, um, beautiful painting on the ceiling which we've just completed with gold leaf and then uh, we have a beautiful, um, very unusual suite on property. We're set over 22 acres, a very lush, almost botanical landscaping and the bungalows to, to the, uh, by the mountain side of the property uh, we've just furnished with plunge pools which are hugely popular and doing really well but you can actually have families or groups of people in a one bedroom bungalow up up until four bedrooms so it's fantastic if you want your own little cottage it, it, so it's great for a family escape then too, which is a very important thing when you, you think about the different markets that come in here yes. to this town. No, absolutely. We have a lot of leisure travellers and as I said, we have multi-generational families sometimes. Always, we get a lot of people celebrating things, whether it be at their wedding or their anniversary. We do a lot of celebratory weekends, uh, which is nice, keeps it fun. Now alongside the architecture of the hotel and your location, which are on the beach, mm -hmm. you're very well known for your brunch, aren't you? Oh yes, Sunday champagne brunch. A lot of people come up from LA for that and it is really a feast um, and it's lovely. You can actually spill out onto the terrace of there, this restaurant and because we're south facing, the, the views from that terrace are just spectacular. We get sunrise and sunset and it's really a popular location, yeah. And it's, it's quite the menu. I've been yes. uh, seeing it a few times yeah. now and it's uh, quite a selection. You don't really see brunches like that in California anywhere. No, no, no. It is, it is really unique and um, yes, we, could, we just love doing it because everybody comes and has a really good time. And you're very well known also for your Christmas decorations in your lobby. Is it one yeah. of your favorite times of year? It really is. We, uh, we, we have a team that come in like little elves the day after Thanksgiving, in the morning after Thanksgiving. And then you come in one morning and then it's all lit up. Um, we have a beautiful gingerbread display this year and people come from quite afar to come and see our Christmas decorations. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for having us and have a great holiday. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Four Seasons of Biltmore is also home to some of the best restaurants in Santa Barbara. Let's go inside. Jeff, thanks so much for your time today. Christmas is next week. What's on your Christmas menu? Oh, well, th there is a lot of things. But uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are putting the uh, uh, truffle, uh, there is uh, 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 prime rib, uh, uh, there is uh, beef wellington, there is uh, obviously uh, king crab leg, uh, uh, oysters, uh, there is uh, prawns, uh, caviar. There is a lot of, a lot of offering. And we're here at the Four Seasons in Santa Barbara, and you do an amazing brunch every Sunday, don't you? Every Sunday. Is, uh, I'm proud to admit that it's uh, one of the best uh, brunch in, in town. It uh, uh, starts at 9 o'clock this year, and uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, different stations, from uh, Action Station, uh, from the Pasta, Cacio e Pepe in the Parmesan Wheel. Uh, we have the Carving Station, Omel Station, Seafood, uh, and then uh, even the, the, the Action Station of uh, Dessert every Sunday change constantly. And this has been going on for a few years now, hasn't it? 
for uh, a lot of years, a lot yeah. of years, at least uh, 20 years, uh, the, 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 the Billmore uh, branch is uh, renovated. Now we're here in Bella Vista restaurant, which is also uh, your main restaurant at the hotel. It's a main restaurant, it's a three meal, practically in uh, Bella Vista we're uh, serving uh, breakfast a la carte and the breakfast buffet with omelette station. We serve obviously on Sunday the brunch, lunch and dinner. So. What are some of your favorite things about that? You obviously do some beautiful Italian dishes, you do some great meat as well, don't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. So in Bellavista, all the pasta is house-made. We have a fantastic machine and we are challenging ourselves every time to come up with a new dough to present a shape, to present a new pasta dish our clientele. We are the only hotel in Santa Barbara we are doing dry age, so practically we are buying monthly around 25 shell of uh, New York Bonin and we dry age in house for 30 days and it's one of the uh, big hit in uh, Bella Vista for dinner. And then uh, one thing I'm very proud of, that uh, since uh, we reopened and, and uh, June 1st, uh, we are uh, doing the, the uh, pasta card. So practically, as I said, uh, we use uh, a 24 months uh, uh, aged Parmigiano. We uh, will, we cut in half, uh, we uh, uh, scoop in the center, and then we go table side and we do the pasta cacio e pepe. So house-made spaghetti with a cacio e pepe, uh, toss it inside the Parmesan wheel, and then we shave a black truffle on top. So it's a wonderful experience, Chef. Wonderful experience. It's amazing. And across the road, you've got Tide's restaurant, which is in the old beautiful Coral Casino here, right on the beach in Santa Barbara. Oh, wow. It's, a, it's the best uh, club in Santa Barbara. So uh, we have uh, the Coral uh, Kitchen, that is a, is a pool restaurant. During, especially during the summer, and the upstairs we have Tides, that is our uh, uh, the other, uh, signature restaurant, it's this coastal seafood uh, uh, menu, obviously is, uh, somebody want to have uh, a, a beef uh, or, or, or chicken, we have uh, this, but no, mostly we look at the uh, uh, seasonality in all the restaurants, and over there is more focus in the fish, uh, uh, local fish that, that we can find in Santa Barbara, from sea urchin, uh, spot prawns, local white buses, uh, spiny lobster, so. A lot of people say some of the best produce in California comes from Santa Barbara. Absolutely. Uh, seven uh, seven miles from the hotel there is a Carpinteria, which is famous for avocado. I uh, literally, I am doing this job since 30 years. I try so many different types of avocado, but this one is like to have a, 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 a scoop with a spoon, a piece of butter. Wow. It's just amazing. The, we have the, the papaya in summer from Carpenteria. That, that simply, I'm telling you, simply you cut in half, you squeeze a little bit of lime and a little bit of sea salt. It's just, it's all there. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just need to find the right product at the right uh, time and then everything it became easy. As someone who comes from the Italian Riviera, where it's uh, produce abound and uh, great wine regions all over Italy, you've got very similar things here with great wine around the corner. Oh, absolutely. Santa Barbara and, and uh, up in the valley, there is a fantastic winery, there is some fantastic Pinot, there is some fantastic Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, and, uh, and so it's a, it's a pleaseful to play a little bit. Sometimes we do a, a special wine dinner in connection with some uh, a, a winery around here. So, no, it's fun. It's beautiful. It looks like to be home a little bit. Yeah. And when's the best time of year to come here? We're here in winter now, but it's also beautiful in winter as, as much oh, as in summer. Isn't <laughs> it? Well, if this is uh, friends in Italy, they told me this is not winter. But I think I think a spring uh, at the beginning of summer is the top. It's the top. It's not overcrowded, and then we we you have the best weather ever. Wonderful, chef. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Look forward to trying the food. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. Coming up after the break, business class from Santa Barbara continues. We'll be back with more business class on your money. And now, more business class on your money. Expedia recently held its partner conference in Las Vegas called Explore 18, where the company revealed it would almost hit $100 billion in revenue. Let's find out more. Thanks so much for your time today. We're here at Explore 18, your, your big annual partner conference. And tell us some of the ways Expedia at the moment is helping hotels, both big and small, through distribution. 
Well, I think we've been historically helping them by providing them access to the you know, global demand and localizing our sites, offering global payment methods to our consumers. So with one contract, one uh, interaction with us, they have access to the world. So that was the way we were doing it in the past, which is great. We continue to expand that. But now we're also looking at their specific needs, what they're trying to solve for, their pain point, and we're building technology to really help them solve these pain points. I'll take an example for smaller hotels, our hotels that are not part of a of a large chain, we built a revenue management system which is free called Rev Plus, uh, which gives uh, gives partners access to real time demand data, forecasting at the market level and at the property level, and pricing insights and pricing recommendation at the property level, which is something that normally only a big hotel could have access to. And we're providing that to all partners for free. So that's one example. At the same time, we're also working with our chain partners to help them convert more demand that they get on their direct website. For instance, demand that comes to book a package. Uh, historically, a hotel chain cannot book a package, right? Uh, but now we have more and more of our chain partners, um, like Marriott, but like Posada, like MGM, where we are here today, that is using our package white label engine in their own website to convert that package demand that comes to them. So these are two areas where we help both independents and, uh, and big chains. And you've got hundreds of millions of room nights are booked every year, so you have got access to some serious data. Yes, we have access to not only room night data, but we also have access to flights data. So we have access to uh, customers that book flights, that are searching for flights, searching for destinations, searching for activities, which is an even broader set of, of data than specifically hotel room nights, which tends to come a little later in the, in the funnel. So we're able to qualify demand to, uh, to a market even before people start shopping for hotels, uh, which I think you know, gives us a pretty unique yeah. opportunity to productize that for our hotel partners to give them access to that, that you know, visibility on the demand in their, in their region and in their, in their neighborhood even that nobody else can provide. So we're pretty excited about that. Are you seeing a lot, of, a lot more uptake on the package front of, of things where people aren't just coming to book a flight or a hotel there, they are booking more packages, obviously they are booking the flight and the hotel. Um, we have, I mean, we have a you know large part of the, especially, especially the brand Expedia business that is coming on package. Uh, it's about a third of our business, uh, but we think there's also opportunity to expand a little bit the concept of the package and and work on more the bundling of, uh, of uh, travel products because some consumers uh, like to book a package all in one go. Some prefer to do that sequentially and just first of all select the destination, secure the flight, then shop around a little bit book the hotel, then you know, shop more, book the activity, book a yeah. car. That whole thing, you can call it a package, but it is done in multiple uh, you know, time frames if you want. And, and we want to offer the opportunity to customers to also shop like that, yeah. not necessarily force them to you know, transact in, in, in one go for everything. Yeah, back in the day, independents either had to be through travel agents or they had to go and join a, a marketing organization. Now they can just put all their inventory through you guys. And it's leveling that playing field, isn't it, between unbranded and branded? Well, we think it does. Uh, we think it does. It, it allows an independent, if, if a, an owner decides to stay independent uh, or grow a property as an independent, we want to offer them a series of tools to allow them to be successful, not only on Expedia, by the way, but also uh, through their own channels. Like, you know, revenue management is, is, a, is a way for them to price correctly across channels, just not on Expedia. Yeah. We're also offering them uh, access to tools like Alice, which is a you know, technology that, that uh, optimizes the operations of the, ho of the hotel, the property, yeah. connects the, the front office with the back office in a more efficient way so that properties and owners can save costs more. Uh, so these are types of technology that we're making available to uh, independents to make them successful. We're also offering them the capacity to be uh, uh, exposed under a VIP uh, badge, if you want, a VIP yeah. program, which gives them a special visibility on our sites so that they're part of uh, you know, a select group of, uh, of properties that offer great service, etc. So it gives them a series of opportunities to compete yeah. with you know, the branded hotels, which you know, have, have a lot of things provided by their yeah. brands. So it's, it's kind of leveling the playing field in that way. Yeah. Now you've been with the company for some time now. Are you, are you even you astounded with the growth sometimes of how, how rapid this rise has been and you've become the travel website that you have to visit? Um, I, I'm astonished by the growth of the travel market. It's more, it's, I'm more excited. Uh, you know, the travel grows at 2x the GDP, and that is super exciting because we're on an industry that naturally grows uh, 
uh, faster than GDP because just more and more people want to travel, which is great. Our job is to break the barriers to travel and, and make it easier for people to, to discover the world. Uh, and uh, you know, we're also benefiting from the move online, uh, which, which kind of accelerates the, the growth of online travel. And hopefully we're doing a good job serving customers and partners uh, and building a platform where both customers and partners want to come and, and, and you know, uh, meet each other if you want. So we think there's a fantastic prospect um, uh, for the future, just for travel, for online, and hopefully for Expedia in, in that ecosystem. Wonderful, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, that's it from us in Santa Barbara. Thanks for watching, and from all of us here at Business Class, we hope you have a wonderful festive season.